Welcome back, and in this module, we are going to be talking about the immune system. This is the last module of the anatomy and physiology section, so let's get into it. So the immune system consists of cells, tissues, and organs that work together to protect the body from attack against infections, antigens, foreign proteins, and pathogens. The immune system includes the lymphatic system as well as the red bone marrow and numerous leukocytes or white blood cells. The body's general immune defenses include your skin, which is an intact epidermis and dermis that form a barrier against bacteria, ciliated mucous membranes, so cilia sweep pathogens out of the respiratory tract, glandular secretions, secretions from exocrine glands destroy bacteria, gastric secretions, so gastric acid destroys pathogens, normal bacterial populations compete with pathogens in the gut and vagina, Inflammatory responses send white blood cells and chemical reactions to stop infection, and there are three lines of defense. So we can see these are all the different organs that are involved in the immune system. So types of cells you'll find in the immune system are leukocytes or white blood cells. They are produced in the red bone marrow and leukocytes can be classified as monocytes, which are macrophages and dendritic cells, granulocytes, which are neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils, T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, and natural killer cells. So if we look over at this chart, I really like this chart because it shows you just all the different cells. So if we see down here, those gran granulocytes, we have our basophil, fills, our neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, which make the macrophages. We also have the natural killer cells, our T cells and B cells. So this kind of shows you what they look like. You don't need to memorize this uh, diagram. All right, so let's talk about macrophages. These are physiocytes that alert T cells to the presence of foreign substances. They are located right here. They travel in the lymph or fixed in the lymphatic tissue and are the largest long-living phagiocytes that engulf and destroy pathogens. So that's really the main point of macrophages. What you may see on the exam is if they're asking about a type of cell in the immune system that engulfs, like so it kind of eats it, and then destroys the pathogen, it's going to be the macrophages. T lymphocytes, these include helper T cells, killer T cells, suppressor T cells, and memory T cells. That's gonna be over here. And helper T cells help the body fight infections by producing antibodies and other chemicals. Killer T cells destroy cells that are infected with a virus or pathogen and tumor cells. Suppressor T cells stop or suppress the other T cells when the battle is over. And after the initial exposure, memory T cells remember in the blood on alert in case the invader attacks again. So they remain in the blood and they remember what that attacker looks like. So if they see it again, then they will know that it's in the body and the other cells can attack it. So secondary antibody response occurs when the person is exposed to the antigen on a subsequent occasion. And these directly attack cells infected by viruses and bacteria. So the thing is, remembering the different types of T cells, the name pretty much tells you what the definition is, right? A helper T cells are helping, killer T cells are killing, suppressor T cells are suppressing the other T cells, and memory T cells are remembering what the invader looked like. So those are kind of straightforward. <clears throat> so B lymphocytes or B cells produce antibodies. These cells target specific bacteria for destruction. Neutrophils are short-lived phagocytes that respond quickly to invaders and they carry out phagocytosis as part of the innate immune response. Basophils alert the body of invasion. When they move into the tissue, they are known as mast cells and they release histamine. 
Eosinophils are large, long-lived phagocytes that defend against multicellular invaders. In memory cells, memory lymphocytes circulate through the body for years to alert a possible new attack. So if you look over here, you can see the different types of leukocytes, the approximate percentage in the body, and their roles in defense. So you don't need to remember the percentages, but you should know their roles in defense. And, you know, basophils release histamine, lymphocytes make those antibodies, destroying cells infected by pathogens, acenophils fight protozoan infections, neutrophils use phagocytosis, and they also fight fungal infections, and monocytes and macrophages use phagocytosis and release cytokines. All right. So different types of cells, we have antigens. These are substances that stimulate the immune system. They're proteins on the surface of bacteria, viruses, or fungi. However, they can also be drugs, toxins, and foreign particles. So an antigen we want to remember is a particle on a surface of something, um, and that is what we're fighting. It's not the actual thing it's on, if that makes sense. So, you know, when women are pregnant, sometimes their blood can have a certain type of antigen. And if they do and the, and the baby, or if they don't, if they don't have the antigen, but the baby does have the antigen in their blood because they got that gene from the father, the mother's body, if it's the second child, because it's already seen its long story, you'll learn in nursing school, but the mother's body will attack the baby and the baby will not survive unless they give it this certain medication. So that's an example of an antigen, right? It can be like on a blood cell even. In a typical immune response, when a pathogen or foreign substance enters the body, it is engulfed by a macrophage, which presents fragments of the antigen on the surface, and a helper T cell joins the macrophage and killer cytotoxic T cell and B cells are activated. So we can see those here, right? We have a typical immune response, it's engulfed by the macrophage and the little antigen, which is right here, is then passed over to the T cell, which will then activate the B cells. So killer T cells search out and destroy cells presenting with the same antigen. So now we have the natural killer cells here. They are aware that this antigen is in the body and they are out searching for it. And if they find it, then they kill that cell. B cells differentiate into plasma cells and memory cells. So we can see that over here. Plasma cells produce antibodies specific to the pathogen or foreign substance. Antibodies circulate in the blood. Antibodies bind to antigens on the surface of pathogens and mark them for destruction by phagocytes. And memory cells remain in the blood to protect against future infection. We can see over here, this is a breakdown of what is happening. So the B cell is differentiating into plasma and memory cells. And... So that is just a diagram. So in the immune system, there are different types of cells. As far as immunoglobulins, that's what we're going to talk about on this slide. So immunoglobulin, you have uh, immunoglobulin G, A, E, M, and D. So immunoglobulin G is most abundant in the body. It is secreted by plasma cells in the blood and able to cross the placenta to the fetus. IgA, so that's uh, immunoglobulin, can also be called Ig, so IgA is secreted saliva, bowel fluids, and nasal fluids. It prevents bacteria invasion of the mucosa membrane. It can also be found in the tears and breast milk and protects against pathogens. Immunoglobulin E is an immune reaction to parasites and is also responsible for allergic reactions. Immunoglobulin N is produced when there is a pathogen invasion by B cells, and its role is the initial immune response. It may be attached to the surface of a B cell or secreted into the blood, and it's responsible for early stages of immunity. And then we have immunoglobulin D, which their role is the induction of antibody production, 
and prevention of respiratory tract infections. It's part of the B cell receptor and activates basophils and mast cells. Then there are also cytokines. So cytokines are substances such as interferon, interleukin, histamine, tumor necrosis factor, and prostaglandins and growth factor, which are secreted by certain cells of the immune system and have an effect on other cells. So their function includes many different small proteins that the immune cells use to communicate, and it depends on which specific cytokine is being used. They can activate or inhibit immune cells. They control their development or direct the traffic of the immune cells in the body. They essentially control the behavior of the immune cells. Any problem that leads to too few or too many cytokines can cause the immune system to flounder. Fortunately, these control presents an opportunity for scientists to manipulate an ailing immune system by discovering drugs that block the function of certain cytokines. They're produced by immune cells and travel through the blood, lymph, and other tissues to their target cells. And this was released by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. So levels of defense. The first line of defense, you do definitely need to know these for the T's, by the way, so definitely have these memorized. I know this lecture has a lot to memorize, so but you guys can do it. So first line of defense is nonspecific and forms a barrier that keeps pathogens from entering the body. The skin and assorted body fluids such as tears, mucus, saliva, waxes, and stomach acid keep infections out and can expel them from entering. So we can see over here, the skin is protecting against different bacteria and things like that. So now the second line of defense is also nonspecific and attempts to limit the spread of invading microbes before any specific immune response begins. The swelling and redness of inflammation signals the body has called the white blood cells and natural killer cells to consume bacteria and destroy blood cells infected with a virus. White blood cells or phagocytes swallow bacteria that has been identified by helper T cells. An interferon combats viruses invading and blocks cell to cell infections. So this happens when you have a wound. So we can see over here there's a wound and bacteria and um, other pathogens enter the wound. So you can see that, all that little black stuff coming in. Platelets from the blood release blood clotting proteins at the wound site, and mast cells secrete factors that mediate dilation and constriction of the blood vessels, delivering blood plasma and cells to the injured area. Neutrophils secrete factors that kill and degrade the pathogens. So we can see this is the blood vessel that is secreting the neutrophils to the site. Also, the blood platelets are here. We have some cytokines, macrophages coming in. So neutrophils secrete factors that kill and degrade pathogens. Neutrophils and macrophages remove the pathogens. We can see that here. Macrophages secrete cytokines, which attack immune system cells attract the immune system cells to the site and activate cells involved in tissue repair. And inflammatory responses continue until the foreign material is eliminated and the wound is repaired. So this is the second line of defense. The third line of defense is specific, custom made to fight off specific infections. It relies on two types of cells that originate in the bone marrow, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Antigens bind to the B lymphocytes, which produce antibodies specific to that infection. Antibodies are produced. This is known as the hemorrhal response or antibody-mediated response. These lymphocytes, called memory cells, remember a specific infection. This is what happens with a vaccine. T lymphocytes originate in the bone marrow but mature in the thymus gland. They attack pathogens by the cell-mediator response. Killer T cells or cytotoxic T cells move about the body looking for unknown cells and kill them off. Helper T cells help both the B cells and killer T cells recognize invaders. So with the third level of defense, the key thing is that this is a 
custom made. So there is some sort of antigen that is triggering the immune system to go to it and and fight it off. So active immunity. There is innate immune system is present in at birth and protects an individual from pathogens. So we can see you have your immunity and you have two types. You have your innate immunity and you have your adaptive immunity. So innate is present at birth and adaptive occurs when an individual encounters infections or has an immunization. The individual develops an adaptive immunity that reacts to pathogens. This can further be broken down into artificial and natural. So in adaptive immunity, they have active and passive immunities can be acquired naturally or artificially. So that's how we're going to talk about right here. So naturally acquired active immunity is natural because the individual is exposed and builds immunity to a pathogen without an immunization. And artificial immunity is acquired active immunity is artificial because the individual is exposed and builds immunity to a pathogen by a vaccine. And for both of these, you can have active or passive. So as we can see, if it's a natural way that you have gotten adaptive immunity, if it's passively, it can be given to you when you're a baby from your mother. And if it's active, that would be if you had an infection. And if it's artificial, it can be passive through an antibody transfer, or it can be active through an immunization. Naturally acquired passive immunity is natural because it happens during pregnancy. So it's going to be this right here. As antibodies move from the mother's bloodstream to the bloodstream of the fetus, and the antibodies can be transferred from a mother's breast milk. An artificially acquired passive immunity. Artificially acquired passive immunity provides quick and short-lived protection to a disease by the use of antibodies. And that is the end of the immune system module. So make sure to do the worksheet. I know there's a lot to memorize on these slides, but just go through them. Try to memorize the different main points that we went over, different types of cells, different types of immunoglobulins, different types of immunity, different types of defenses, and then you can do the worksheet, take the quiz, and move on to the next module. I will see you there. Bye.